Welcome to Twilight Render's Getting Started video tutorial series. This is Interior Lighting for Architects. Follow this quick checklist before starting your lighting and test rendering to give maximum workflow speed. Hide any extra geometry that will not affect your final rendering. Extra geometry will slow your rendering as the computer calculates for each object how it affects the final image. Make sure there are no reversed faces. Utilize SketchUp's monochrome view style to check for reversed faces in your model. The proper normal of each face is important for the calculation of reflections and refractions of your materials. Paint only front faces and avoid painting entire groups or components. To maximize workflow speed while test rendering, turn off furniture and plant layers for your scene. Position the sun for maximum penetration into your space. In the northern hemisphere, March usually has good sun position for deep sun penetration. Straighten verticals in your scene by choosing two-point perspective. In order to retain the ability to match the scene's view with the rendered image, do not pan the camera. Create a new scene or update your scene being sure that you are saving all this information in the scene, the hidden geometry, layer visibility, camera position, sun position, etc. Turn off sun shadows in SketchUp to maximize viewport speed while working. The sun will still render shadows in Twilight Render. Purge unused information from the SketchUp file to clean up any junk information left behind from the building process. Go to Window, Model Info, Statistics, Purge Unused, or utilize a third-party purge plugin such as Purge All. Place lights only where they would be placed in real life. Avoid faking fill lighting. In some cases, creative light placement can serve an artistic purpose, but in general, avoid adding lights where they would not go in real life. Many lights can increase render times. Keeping lighting to minimum is best. In a scene with hundreds or more lights, try using render setting low, or you may need to use the Easy 09 render setting for interiors. Set reasonable wattage or lumen power for your lighting. Use manufacturer suggested light powers whenever possible. Increase the effect of lighting in the scene by setting the correct exposure or by adjusting the tone mapping of the rendering, not by increasing the power of the lights. Twilight Render V2 Pro users can jumpstart their lighting when they find a similar light component from the Twilight Render light component package available in the red carpet section of the forum. See a link in the description of this video. Once you have installed the Twilight Light components, find a light similar to the one you would like to create, then copy the materials and light objects that you think are similar to your needs into the light components in your scene as a good starting point. Or you can build your lamp glass as a single face and apply the lamp glass material templates for great results. The default light object placed by Twilight Render's light tool is a 100 watt incandescent bulb 4 inches in diameter. Use SketchUp components for any duplicate light fixtures in your scene. This way, Whenever you set the lighting for one object, it will be set for all of them. Be sure to use Easy Prelim, Low, or Low Plus render settings for quick lighting checks in the beginning. In the Environment settings, try using a spherical sky with a tree line in the spherical sky slot. There are some available for free to V2 Pro users in the red carpet section of the forum. Add materials judiciously. Keep in mind that the more materials you add can increase render times. With the option enabled in Twilight Render V2, most default SketchUp materials will automatically render with a template material in Twilight Render, such as wood, stone, water, and glass.
Increasing the number of reflections in the scene will increase the bounces of light to be calculated and therefore increases render times. Blurry reflections and blurry metals and translucent materials will increase render times. Avoid fully saturated colors. If a material color is set to 100% brightness, then 100% of the light hitting the surface would be reflected away from the surface, which is not possible in real life. No pure blacks, whites, or pure colors should be used. Avoid light emitting surfaces. These will increase render times. Never paint curved surfaces with light emitting materials as each triangle in the model will be considered as a light in the scene. The exception is if you are rendering with easy 1 through 7 render settings and set the light emitting materials to be fake. This results in the material appearing to be lit up while not actually projecting light onto any surface in the scene. Then you will use a spot or point light for fill lights. Interiors with several lights can be rendered with lower render settings while still giving good quality at quick render speeds. If time is not an issue, Easy 09 will generally give you the best quality lighting results and materials for architectural interior renderings. Architects in a hurry will find the 04 medium render setting to be quick and useful for interior spaces lit with up to 50 lights. Edit your lights from the Edit Light dialog. Anytime you place a light inside of a component, it will list the light as being placed only once, even if you have 20 copies of that component in your scene. Set the light power based on the manufacturer website information for the lumen output for your light fixture. If this is unknown, use wattage. If you load a manufacturer IES file into the light component, leave the power to be 1 causing the light power to be defined by the information in the IES file. Create a linear soffit light by using a series of spots instead of using a light emitting surface. This will result in faster render times when rendering with Easy 1 through 7 settings. If you are rendering with Easy 09, the spotlights can be omitted. If rendering with Easy 09 or Easy 10, the light emitting surface in linear light fixtures will work well. Paint the light surface with a unique material. Choose your material with Twilight Material Editor's eyedropper, then choose Templates, Emitter, Incandescent 60 watts. Then you can set the lumen output for all faces painted with that material combined. brightness of the rendered image is dependent on the tone mapping of the rendered image, not by the power of your light fixtures. Overdriving the power of your light fixtures will result in errors, artifacts, and longer render times. Easily increase the brightness of the rendered image by setting tone mapping under the post-process pull-down menu. Here you can choose between linear and simple tone mapping options where you can increase either the light and dark of the image or increase the exposure or gamma qualities. Place a spot or point light inside your light fixture approximately where you would place the actual light bulb in real life. Then set the appropriate parameters for the light object. Place a spotlight by inserting light with the Twilight Light Editor tool. Right click before placing the light to set the type of light you want to place. Then you'll click in your scene three times. The first click is to choose a reference point, second to move the mouse from your reference point to the insertion point, and your third click to specify the direction for the throw of light from the spot. You do not want your light to conflict with adjacent geometry, this is the purpose of a reference point. In the light editor, you can change the light type. 
You can adjust the settings for the spotlight, such as giving it a name, changing the radius, set the power in watts or lumens, set the fall off angle where the light will fade to black, set the hotspot angle where the light will remain at full intensity. The efficacy of your light fixture is a calculation of how many lumens per watt will be produced by that light source. This is used to compensate when you do not know the lumen output of your light fixture. It is more precise to input the correct number of lumens. When creating preliminary renderings, use a low resolution such as 900 by 600. Enable the fit to view proportions to match your rendered image proportion to the SketchUp scene view proportions. Use Easy Prelim or Easy Low Render settings to save a lot of time in the preliminary rendering phase. When your scene has a lot of direct lighting near the camera, this means that you may use lower quality render settings to get a good result. Scenes with low light or a lot of indirect lighting will require much higher render settings to get good results. It is suggested to use Easy 09 render setting for scenes with less direct lighting. Realistic lighting requires you to set a realistic color for your light. Default pure white light doesn't actually happen in most lighting. Choose a warm color to approximate the correct color you desire, or set light color by choosing the color in Kelvin degrees in the RGB light color tab. For a good size image for printing at metric A3 paper size or 11 by 17, Try choosing 2800 pixels wide. The larger the image, the longer the render time, so choose the lowest resolution you can to maximize your output quality versus render time. For a good quality image in a reasonable rendering time, for interior images such as this, try Easy 04 Medium, Easy 05 Medium Plus, or for better anti-aliasing, try Advanced 04A or 04B. Here is the result of advanced 04A medium render setting. Render time for this image on an i7 laptop was under 2 hours. Thank you for watching this tutorial on interior lighting for architects. Please join us on the forums if you have any questions about using Twilight Render. Be sure to hit like and subscribe for more from Twilight Render.